Whew. I haven't done one of these in a while. About a good old uh, int dabbler. I think I'm going to alter the uh, strength somewhat. Bump that up to 18. It's just up three points. Really so that I can two-hand and uh, be able to use the Royal Greatsword. Oh, I think that's going to be such a sick option. Proper Colossal. Get to experiment with that weapon and that skill as I always wanted to. Mmm. Yeah, it's going to be a good change. But, uh, yeah, it's just one more somber option on the table. It's going to be a great time. Shifted around uh, because I'm using these somber options. I'm not really going to be investing in uh, Lusats during progression. Uh, not really, no. S uh, somber one is going to be this uh, Meteoric Orblade. Soothing one is eventually going to be the Academy Glintstone Staff. And then Somber 2 is going to be Royal Greatsword. Right now, just taking my time. Uh, this uh, bow, the horn bow, should have been better. It should have been uh, Smithing 6, and I did not have it. Sometimes uh, these ants can be really annoying, but if you are uh, just careful, collective, and you aren't uh, stingy with your flasks like I am, then uh, hey, you can get rid of them just fine. I always pull them. You're always going to want to do that. Don't get swarmed. Yes, I do have AoE to deal with a swarm. I can deal with that. But, not recommended. Even if I don't have a bow for whatever reason, or a short bow, I'll use basic throwing knives for these ain't situations. Here I'm just trying to mess around with armor again. The more armor that you have, the better options you have for melee shenanigans, keeping that good 51 poise. It's all important to match all the weight levels, get that medium roll. <laughs> Octopus Hood has a uh, meme value in fashion, I guess. Yeah, the versatility of the Meteor Gore Blade again just showcasing itself during this episode. I've got effective DPS and. I've got the Gravitas, which I should use here, which I don't know why it didn't it cost me. But yeah, we'll see the chunking of the R2s being used again later on in this episode. It's so good. So ridiculously good. Now, on this character, I don't fight the Dragonkin Soldier. Uh, in Siofra, but I did fight it the other day on uh, just a ruins build, just working on a uh, build making series there on the side. It's kind of just working project, working work, WIP, work in progress. It'll happen, but. Uh, Right now I definitely want to mess around with all these top tier, relatively complete builds, the int build is super complete, dex build has got some unique stuff going around with it. Build completeness is just super satisfying to me. And what I mean by that is uh, I can use melee, I can use magic, everything scales well and I have good progression. Complete build, very satisfying. Not only that, but the playstyle is just right up my alley for uh, so many of these. Gotta be careful of that uh, spray. The range attack spray, especially later in the game, is nasty, nasty damage. Really effective. Situation. And I didn't use Gravitas again, but far less punished for it. Honestly, still should have used Gravitas. I get into these situations where I'm so... I'm so conservative with my potions and my FP that 
I'm not thinking ahead like, oh, well there's no boss in between now and the next grace point. Which I guess is a good mentality to have for the DLC because we're not going to know again. But I know now for the main game, so I should be using my skills when they, co -op, when they uh, come up to dominate the battlefield and so on. I should be using flasks while there's a, a, uh, just regular mobs in the way of now and the next grace. Don't be afraid. Definitely as a new player, uh, I would play relatively conservative just to get used to the game, but once you're already pretty decent, it's like, man, you know, you might as well just understand the layout, and especially if you have over a thousand hours like me, this is a uh, definitely a, a bad habit to get into when you know, it's like, okay, well there's a grace up here, and there's this here, and there's that. Now down here, what's real, what's so good about coming down here is that there's so many smithing stone threes just lurking in here. I love it, getting all these threes. Mm -mm. It's a fun time. Smithing stone threes and somber threes are definitely a choke point for a little bit, but once you really get in here, in Lyurnia and all that, the threes start just popping up time and again. I have more threes than I know what to do with. Of course, it helps to know what I'm going for, weapon-wise, mechanics-wise. But then again, like I mentioned before, being able to uh, dominate enemies and bosses with just the supported level of uh, smithing stones that you can buy infinitely with certain bell bearings, that still gives you room for experimentation. You just have to be very careful with your analysis and build making when you finally decide what to upgrade beyond that supporting point. And it might be a little tricky, especially when we consider uh, being new, being inexperienced, like we're going to be in the DLC again. It's going to feel like we're not really dominating, because that's just a knowledge check. That's a skill issue on our end most of the time, because we're new, and we should expect having some struggles, especially if we're going to be experimenting with the supporting level. But uh, at the end of the day, it's also just soulsgame.jpg, right? It is a FromSoft game, and there's going to be a bit of struggle to be expected. So take that struggle in stride, learn from it most you can, do some good analysis, and uh, yeah, don't be afraid to get into these situations where you die a lot or you're fucking around with new skills and ashes of war, death is gonna happen in this game. Believe it or not. I don't know what to say. But yeah. Experimentation, I mean, we have so much stuff. Especially considering on an int build for casting we have the Meteoric Ore Blade, or not, the Meteor, Meteorite Staff. I'm chilling. The amount of stuff that I have is the same for upgrades as any other build in the game right now. A little bit more than uh, Faith Build or an Arcane. Well, not Arcane. Faith, yes. But, uh, man, we're, we're styling. We've got enough stones for everything that we need, and then some. And we'll keep getting them, because we're going to get some smithing zone 4s, too. What a lovely area. Boom. 4. I wish there was a more convenient way to take out these guys. At the moment, they're just a stage hazard type enemy. Nothing serious. Not worth your time. Maybe one of these days I'll fuck around with like an int arcane build, maybe if we get an actual int arcane wet blade or infusion post Shadow of the Ur Tree, or in Shadow of the Ur Tree rather, then maybe I'll uh, start fucking around with the int arcane, but I mean, if you go like 50 arcane, 28 int, bum rush the uh, academy, 
so they can get over to what's it called volcano Minor, and then go all the way around real quick run back run by everything get yourself by the omen killer and then sneak behind him to get the alban arc stuff uh, the alban arc staff will be arcane and then some int and then you could also eventually infuse the uh, Clayman's Harpoon bleed with spinning strikes. And that would be a pretty good setup, honestly. That would be pretty spicy. You could do a lot of good with that. It's very limited still, like the most limited and incomplete type of build that you can make. It's in Arcane. But that setup specifically, even though that that's like the setup for that build, uh, that's pretty good. You could do some good shit with that. You could dominate some enemies and bosses with that. Absolutely. And just, I mean, being able to still cast, uh, you know, Gelmir's Fury eventually, or just use Meteor or Blade plus uh, Roiling Magma like usual, like, shit. You're still styling. It's not going to be as effective as using other things, but, uh, you know, we've got bleed slapped on top of that, which, eh, not too bad, not too bad. Plus, the Clayman's Harpoon is gorgeous. Check out those three threes, by the way. Clayman's Harpoon is gorgeous. Really beautiful. Unfortunately, the arcane progression is so, ugh, right at the moment that, uh, well, well, <sighs> It's just, it's difficult. It's difficult if you're going big arcane for uh, casting purposes, which you would if you're bum rushing the Alpen Arc staff, to also then go and, uh, you know, have this blood infused with something pretty decent. Right now, the, the arcane infusions on the uh, Claimant's Harpoon aren't very good until later on in the game. Well, Black Wet Blade, of course, is post dawn, so that's saying something. Early on, uh, I suppose you could uh, grab Spectral Lance. It's like, why would you use that? You have access to Arcane Scaling Rock Sling now. It's like, meh. Ugh. But at least you have Occult Scaling, I suppose. Uh, eh. Eh. Still kind of mad. Well, the interesting thing is, I guess, you could infuse it with the uh, impaling thrust, and then uh, get some some stuff out of that. Maybe cold infuse impaling thrust, and then you throw a, uh, a fire. But no, you would probably use spinning strikes again, just because you can use the L2 plus R1 or L2 plus L2. Use that for stance breaking. I, I'd have to test that out because I don't really use spinning strikes as much as I should. Usually if I look at uh, pole arms in this game, I'm like, well, you know, I could just use a twin blade. And then I just uh, never get around to spinning strikes. That's a problem. I should use, uh, I should try it out. I don't know. Maybe I'll mess around with it on my Ruins build, who knows. That's a little cold infused Clayman's Harpoon. Spinning Strikes. Even just as a test. I should at least test it out, yeah. I'll do that later and get back to you. I don't know what I'm looking for here. Getting the Grace is nice, checking the stones, love that. But, uh... Trying to see if there's any missed loot that I can get just without having to backtrack here. And I don't think so. Also, I'm pretty sure there's only like one or two things that I really want for backtracking. Just trying to think. It's like, hmm. I don't really want one of them, but it's kind of tricky. There's uh, a lot of loot that you can miss in this little area if you're not careful. I believe I've got it all, though. Those crystal knives, dude. Why don't we have access to that? I'm so sad. 
Also, just looking at the, that material, I know you get like the alabaster lord sword, but can I like like, like it, this just makes me want a crafting system and materials for this game, you know? I, like I, I want I want to make a twin blade out of that clayman's material. That that would be so cool. Oh, it'd be so nice. Or like. A colossal sword with that. Yo, just imagine that. Oh, I want it. I want it. I want it. And we we don't have it. Fingers fucking crossed for DLC. Uh, really, there hasn't been too much interesting stuff for me in my build in DLC. Uh, at least like the spoilery footage that we have right now. There's like one interesting thing that I lo I'm looking for, but. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to spoil. But yeah, all the rest of it was kind of... eh. Like, it was very impressive. But it's fucking from software. Like, I know, it was, I know it's going to be impressive. Like, I'm not... concerned. Not concerned at all. sip of water. Mmm. So now I'm getting ready. Setting myself up for the boss area finally. Eh, there's still some ants to deal with and some basilisks. Sure. Sure. But, uh, gotta get yourself ready. Prepped for that boss. Of course, Meteor Gore Blade. But I mean, we have a bunch of slashing options. So let's be real. I have this Vi, although that's, you know, thrust R2, so eh, eh, not the best option. Uh, but the Flamberge, that you could use as well. I maybe should have. Maybe I should have done it. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. I do know that I uh, dominated this boss, and it was pretty fun. It's a pretty fun time. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Just a smooth process. I gotta say, I really dig the uh, Fire Monk armor. It's one of my favorites. That one and then the the, the, uh, the God Skin Fire Monk, or what is it called, the Black Flame Fire Monk? Just like the pure black and white one. That one looks cool too. With this uh, blue hair, though, I love the contrast. Definitely makes me feel like I'm. Uh, a magic caster that dabbles in it with, with magma shit. You know what I mean? That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Just get me to Volcano Manor and we'll get things started. Well, Mount Gelmir. You know. And then Lanedale. That's where you get Gelmir's Fury. Or, well, that's where you kill the, uh, the NPCs that completes the tiny quest that gives you Kill me, Fury. I don't know why I thought there was a basilisk there. It's a shame we just like two HP Andes. Oh my god. So close. So close to killing them. I just decided to cast a little magical limb blade there. Super smooth. I mean, I love that damage. Really takes such a little MP that I'm pretty chilling. Honestly, I probably shouldn't have used it before the boss because look at how I'm dominating these lizard bastards. I hate that they have like one HP remaining. That's so unfortunate. Beautiful view of the Lake of Rant. I love it. And yeah, the game, I mean, just throwing these smithing stone or somber stone threes at you now. 
I'm like done with those. I'm done. I'm chilling. We got EG now. It's no question. No question. I'm set. Done and done. Here we go. Finally bossed, huh? Pretty standard stuff. Let's get the buff set up. Again, really didn't matter that I used that FP. For magical it blade on the uh, basilisk we still had a good amount remaining look at the damage staggered a little bit suboptimal I missed that one charger too I didn't time that right but still did that really matter did that really matter 2 HP looking at done Done and done. Just like that. Wiggle on. Yeah. It's over. Stylus. I love it. I love it. As fun as that boss can be, I've fought him a million times already. And I feel like this is what domination should feel like. Domination in a Souls game should feel like, oh... I've had the best experience with these bosses on my first playthrough or first playthrough with this build or that build, you know? Early experience where you can really get the most out of these bosses. And then later, when you're just going through for, for funsies, you just want that fast experience, you want that sensation of domination, you just get a new feeling. You don't miss out on anything it's just all new sensations that is wonderful we're gonna upgrade that flamberge and now we're gonna go as well because we still have more threes we upgrade that large club might as well now upgrade that horn bow get that thing up come on up up get that thing to plus six uh, do I decide against it? Yeah, I think I might. I don't know what's going through my head here. Post recording, you know? Come on. Upgrade that thing. Let's go. Cool. Get it to plus 11 right now? Yeah. Or plus 10. Whichever. Plus 11, yeah. Another katana guy there. I wish we were wiggling at each other. That would be funny. Look at that. I have a main weapon that's plus 15. It's main smithing weapon right now. I could have it plus 16 if I really wanted to. I have a side weapon that's plus 11. I have another one that's plus 9. And then I have a fourth option that's plus 7. All on the smithing side. On the somber end, I have a Meteoric Ore Blade that's plus 6, and I could have something else that's plus 
five, I could have something else that's plus four, so on and so on. And people are still bitching about the access to stones. I really don't get it. We're going Zvi. Just want to kill that knight with the Zvi. So long as you mark an area where you can skirt around side of the Ruin Bear and just avoid that tough ass enemy, we're all good here. Setting that little marker exactly where it is helps a lot. Of course, once you're there avoiding the Rune Bear, it's real easy. But until then, eh, you might as well just be careful, be careful, be careful. Actually, I'm not really aggroing anything. No archers or what have you. We're taking an excellent route to get here. Now we're just going to skirt around that leftmost side. No rune bear, please, and thank you. Keep going around the left side here. We've got a little, uh, we got this little buddy here. Let's see what this Zweihander can do. Clean. Clean combo with the good old Octopus Head. Alright, catacombs like this, you know what time it is. It is large club time. Fuse that thing sacred and we're having a grand old time. You could go and uh, go to the mausoleum compound and kill the Urtree Avatar over there and get yourself the uh, Holy Boost Cracked Crystal Tear, whatever it's called. And that would help out the... Uh, the good old uh, large club sacred fuse shenanigans, but we'll be fine. This is when I remember about uh, the whole loop of the dungeon thing. I'm like, well, well, you know, I can just spend my FP and we'll be okay. We'll be just fine. Be able to delete skeletons without worrying about uh, them respawning, and then I'll have to worry about the mana after that. It's just a smooth time. Oh, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I'm not using Sacred uh, Blade here. No, I guess not. I guess because I want to spend my, save my FP for uh, the Black Knife Assassin. That makes sense. This is one of those few times where I'll summon every time just because I want uh, this quest at this point in time. Completing this quest eventually is going to get you some nice armor, so I want that. And you get, you get, you know, a nice weapon for a faith build too, but pure faith is kind of eh in this game. Just messing around with this vi, and we both get lost. Uh, 
I should be doing less charge attacks and more basic swings with the R1s. Which is weird because usually it's the opposite in this game. D takes the grab there. Very unfortunate, but still nice. Not as much of a good trade as I would have liked on that uh, black knife there. Smacked it right out of the air for a wonderful 1-2-3 combo. I wish he wiggled at you back, but he does not. When NPCs wiggle at you back, oh my god, from software. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. That's when uh, we'll truly know that they've elevated their game. Or even if they initiate the wiggling, that would be cool. Maybe in Shadow of the Earth Tree, some of the NPCs will wiggle. Probably not, but who knows. There we go. Finally using Sacred Blade. Bad lock on there. Sometimes the ordinary lock on. Oof. Oof. Sometimes it's just not good. Because of that lock on experience, I'm just going through and killing all these little crabs. Doesn't really give me anything to kill all of them, but. Well, from soft, that's what your shitty ass lock on system gets you. Dead crabs. Being locked onto an enemy is pretty fantastic, but, uh. The actual lock on priority is horrible. Horrible. So, that's all they need to tweak. Just give uh, some sort of qualifier to enemies, depending on how generally difficult they are, and given their proximity, give them sliders that uh, have more priority. Hmm. I'm watching somebody's Twitch chat become uh, a strange place. A very strange place, indeed. Very, very odd. This boss can be tricky, but, uh, well, if you got the Holy Knot Crystal Tear, or Whatever it's called. Faith Cracked. Holy Cracked Crystal Tomb? No. Oh. The one that boosts holy damage by 20%, then uh, you'll probably end up killing this guy in one shot. Me, I had some struggles because, well, a bit of bleed. Barely, barely survived. Again, it's 
the grace is right there. It's not a big deal. Look at this guy, the 2 HP looking ass. Thankfully, 51 points to the rescue. And I tank through his light flurry to deliver the finishing blow. Which is, <laughs> you know, just an R1, nothing spectacular. Nine times out of ten, you're gonna one-shot him with just one Sacred Blade with the melee hit. But, uh, hey. This is an into build. Nothing else going for it in terms of strength or faith, really, that could benefit that large club on the Sacred Infusion. Just doing as good as I can with what I got, usually. So here I uh, make an interesting realization. Mr. Gronk Man is not ready to fight. He's not ready to scrap. He's not. Even after I give him this thing set up the grace. That's because I forget to do the death touched catacombs. And whenever I forget to do them, I always check my storage for the uh, Uchi Katana. If it's in there, then I've done the death touched catacombs. If it's not in there, I haven't done it. I gotta go do it. Of course, it's very important to finish up the Death Root uh, side quest, I guess, Garonk's quest. Because, uh, well, you get, you get an Ancient Dragon Spinning Stone, so very spicy. Here's my check before teleporting over. No Uchi Katana. I got the Moon Veil, but no Uchi. Thankfully, my large club is still safe confused, so should be a very smooth boss and, uh, well, smooth dungeon, and also a, uh, a very, very easy boss kill now. It's gonna be beyond overkill. Uh, no, no question about it. There's not really much to say here. Just smurfing these guys. It is what it is. There's Yuchi. I have a uh, list of some of my favorite weapons in the game now, and man, I really hope that uh, some of these get overthrown by the DLC weapons because man uh the gap between like number one like the tied first place and then oh god like the third third best one too just compared down to like lower down the list it's like oh my god lower down the list i'm just like putting random shit in basically like, i don't care about so many of these weapons relative to the top of the top and man, this isn't to say I like like the most incredible, uh, spammable, but technically po most powerful weapons. No, no, no. But uh, I mean, Ruin's great sword, 
Let's talk. Meteoric Orblade. Uh, tied with Ruin's Great Sword. God Skin Peeler. Like those three options. Like, throw in the Claymore on top of that. Woohoo! What else? Like what else are we what else are we talking about? The gap is so far. Like even then it's like I love great stars, I do, I do, but Oh my god. Just these options, man, these options at the top are on another level, man. They really are. Hopefully once I'm done with this run, or even before then, the Royal Great Sword. Woo! Royal Great Sword. I hope that enters the top. I hope that enters top five. I'm ready for it too. It just seems like it's gonna be a a royally fun time. Bit overkill, you might say. Now I'm not sure Gronk's Angie phase uh, is based off of the amount of hits he takes or the amount of damage that you deal to him. I'm leaning towards hits because it doesn't seem like I deal that much damage to him but I get a lot of hits in because it's, well, it's a twin blade technically. So, I don't know man. It's weird. Maybe because I like end up frostbiting him too that might have something to do with it percentage damage wise. Hmm. I don't know. But, uh, I'm just gonna buff up. Just do my thing here. Classic octopus head. So glad I got that rare drop. Here we go. Again, poising through that little bit. Another bit of poise. And just like that, he's done. Frostbitten, still with an enormous amount of HP, but I don't have to see him again until Fair Mazzola. Well, see him angry, that is.